In this video, we're going to create text with a custom texture using GIMP. So the first thing to do after opening the program is to start a new project. We'll go over to File, New, and then you can start a new project any size that you like. I'm going to make mine nice and big. I'm going to choose a 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then if I wanted to, I could use this text in a video and it would look really good. It wouldn't be pixelated or anything. So once you have your canvas, we need to have a picture that we're going to use for the texture of our text. And I found this website called wildtextures.com and I'll link to it in the description. And I like this wood texture. So I'm going to use this as the texture for my text. So after you download your picture or find one on your hard drive that you like, you can just drag it into your canvas. And before we go any further, I also want to add an alpha channel to this. And the reason for doing that is because if I delete something and there's no alpha channel, it's just going to have a black background. The alpha channel allows you to have a transparency. So if I delete something, it'll be transparent. And if I make text out of this, I want to have transparency between the letters so that if I put it on top of a video, the video will show through. So I'm going to go to the layer with my, uh, my textured picture on it, right click and go down to add alpha channel. So now the next thing to do is to add our text. So I'll choose the text tool and I want a relatively bold font. I've used uh, Georgia bold in the past and I like that one. And I'm going to make the font size nice and big because 1920 by 1080 pixels is a pretty big image. So I'm going to make the size 450. You can make it whatever you need to to fit the size of your project. And I'm just going to write text because I don't really have anything better to write. And you could center this, but you could also move your text over the part of the texture you like best. I'm going to go ahead and have this line going right through my text. Now I need to select the outline of my text. And to do that, make sure your text layer is selected, right click on it, and then click on alpha to selection. And now you can see the marching ants going around the outside of my text. That's all we need is the selection. I don't actually need the text layer anymore, so I can delete the text. With that layer highlighted, click the little trash can, the text goes away, but the selection remains. Now I need to invert my selection. So I delete everything except what I've selected. So to do that, we go up to select, click on invert. And now we can hit the delete key and that just leaves our text. Now we have this white background because that's what appeared when we opened up the new canvas. If I turn that off, you see the checkerboard, and that means that it's going to be transparent. If I put this text on top of a video, you'll see the video showing through from behind the text. But I can leave the background on for now while we work. So if we want to get rid of the little marching ants, we can go to select none. And now the text has the texture that we want, but it's a little flat and we can make it look nicer. So what I want to do next is go to filters and then I'm going to go down to decor and add bevel. Now the default thickness is five and you can increase that a little bit if you want to. I'm going to go to seven and I'm going to uncheck this work on copy and then click OK and it adds a little bit of a bevel. If I left the work on copy, it would open up a new tab and I don't want to open it in a new tab. I just want to work on this one canvas that I'm working on now. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. When we add the bevel, it gives it a little bit of a curve on the edge and it does that by adding little highlights around. So I'm going to repeat that so you can see it again. So watch the edges. So since the last thing I did was add a bevel, this first option is to repeat that. So I'll click on repeat, add bevel. It added a little bit more of a highlight to the top 
and it makes it look a little rounded and it looks nicer than, than it did when it was so flat. Now one more thing I can do to make it pop even a little bit more is to add a drop shadow. So we'll go to filters again, light and shadow, and then come down to drop shadow. And you can play with these settings to make them whatever you like, but I like to have my offset at five. I like to bring the blur radius down a little bit to 10, and I want the opacity all the way up to 100. We add a drop shadow, and now that text pops a little bit. So there's our text with a nice texture on it. And if you're going to use this text in another project, you can turn off the background and you can crop, use your crop tool and just cut out around your text. And then you can export that as a PNG. If you export it as a JPEG, you're not gonna get a transparency. You'll have a black background behind it. So when you export it, go to export as, you can call it whatever you want and make sure it's being saved as a PNG. And then you can click export and that's all there is to it. I just wanted to show you very quickly what it would look like if you put this textured text over a photo or a video. You can see, because we saved it as a transparency, you're seeing only the text and the image behind it shows through. So we could even put a little bit of a fade effect in here. And as the video plays, the text then fades in and you can see it over our image. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tutorials related to creating videos and video marketing, visit my website at twinstarmedia.com. There's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.